the topic that we're going to discuss is going to be you had to go this way. You had to go this way. The text is Exodus, the 13th chapter, the 17th through the 22nd verse. The 17th through the 22nd verse. And it reads, then it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that way was near. For God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. When I read it from another version, it says, when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that way was shorter. For God said, if they faced war, they may change their minds and return back into Egypt. So God led the people around the desert road to the Red Sea. The Israelites went up out of Egypt armed for battle. And the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. As we continue, and Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had placed the children of Israel under a solemn oath, saying, God will surely visit you and you shall carry up my bones from here with you. So they took the journey from Sukkoth and camped at Etham at the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. So as to go by day and night and 22, the final verse says he did not take away the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. God's word is already blessed. We bless the hearers of his written word. You had to go this way. I want to take the time to encourage the people of God tonight. And I want to encourage you to know that no matter what you have been through up until this point, the Lord wants you to know that you had to go this way. And what happens is... In the scripture, it said, and it came to pass. And I want to deal with that a little bit before we go on. It came to pass, meaning that there was a set time, that there was a due season, that there was a fullness of time that had come, a fullness of visitation, a Kairos moment where God invades time and it comes to pass that things in your life have to change. Now, I want you to know that on tonight that this word is prophetic. So wherever you are, when you understand that you had to go this way, you had to know that then the time came to pass and Pharaoh had let the people go. So the, the bondage of Pharaoh, the hand of Pharaoh, the 400 years, he had let them go. So they were no longer imprisoned by Pharaoh. But it says God had other plans. And it said what God did was he did not lead them the short way. There was a road through the Philistine country. The Philistines are the enemies. Of the Israelites. And it was a shorter road. God could have led them that way. Because a lot of times in our lives we feel like if it's not easy, it's not God. A lot of times we think that because we're going through a hard thing, God is not in it. But it says that he did not lead them on the shorter road. Because just because something is short doesn't mean that it's not laid with trials and tribulations because it said it was a shorter road, but it was through Philistine country. Philistine is the same people that brought forth Goliath and the giants just because the road is shorter, just because they life look easier than yours, just because just because evildoers look like they are prospering doesn't mean that if you get on that road, you would have that same success. We must follow his leading and when we follow his leading he will lead us on the path where he's going to get the glory so it says and we're still in this first verse he says that the pharaoh had to let him go but god did not lead them through the short road 
For God said, I know my people. I can't give it to them all in their lap. I can't make it all easy. I can't send them all the answers all at once because if I do that, the scripture says, for God said, if they face war, they might change their minds. If they face a fight and I take them the easy way, they won't be strong enough to fight back. He said they may change their minds and risk returning back to Egypt. People of God, we are in such a transitory period and we are following God with every dot, every tittle, every step of the way. We have to be strong and the only way that we're going to be strong is by knowing that we cannot change our minds. Because what happens is when God first delivers you out of something, when God Amen. first takes you out of something, you are at your weakest. This is why when people exit relationships, rebound relationships occur and they're usually more toxic than the one before. Because when you come out of something, you are more susceptible. You are almost going through a PTSD period. These children of Israel were under the hand of Pharaoh for 400 years. Please understand that that affected them. That affected their psyche. That affected how they move. That affected how they get down. So people of God don't think that if you were in something for 5, 10, 15, 20 years and you come out that you're coming out whole. Because even though you you are delivered and you are pulled out of the place the place is still not fully pulled out of you so although they were out of Egypt Egypt was still seen as home for them you always want to return back to home because that is your comfortable place he said I can't take them the easy way because if I take them the easy way, they're going to change their minds. They're going to forget about the plagues that I sent, about how I just delivered them mightily out of Egypt. And if I take them the easy, they're not going to be strong enough. When the war comes, they're just going to want to run back to Pharaoh because that's all they know. Because even when children and people and women have been abused, when that's all they know, they run back to the abusive relationship or they go and create other abusive scenarios because they don't know how to live free. They don't know how to live whole. They don't know how to live healed. And so what they do is go back to the very thing that was killing them in the first place because it is a thing that they recognize and they understand. We know that Moses later in the scripture, they were upset because they say, well, at least in Egypt we had onions and leeks because what the enemy will do is he will cloud your mind to make you think your former life is better in the life that you prayed for right now the enemy will make you think that the life that you once lived is better than the life that he has you in right now but I submit unto you you had to go that way the reason why you had to go that way is so you could be strengthened for battle because if you're not strengthened for battle you're going to return back to the thing that you used to do you're going to return back to the thing that he already delivered you from so he said they'll change their minds Verse 18 says, so God led them around the desert. He led them around the wilderness by the Red Sea. When we think about Egypt, Egypt was a threat. Egypt was a place of bondage. They were there for 400 years. But Egypt didn't start out as that place. Oh, hallelujah. Egypt started out as a refuge. The people of God, the Israelites first went to Egypt to get away from the famine. So when they first encountered Egypt, it was a place of the blessing. Joseph went to Egypt. There was a famine and he saved the entire Israelite nation because in that time, Egypt was a refuge. 
But over time, that same place of refuge became a place of shackles and bondage. The same people who they were getting protection from and wheat and grain and sustenance from became the very people who put whips on their back to build their cities. Once Joseph was dead, the very people that elevated Joseph put nooses around the necks of his people. What do we do, people of God, when our place of refuge has turned into our place of bondage? Oh, hallelujah, I'm going somewhere. What do we do, people of God, when your job and your career and what you do for a living that was once a refuge becomes your prison? What do you do, people of God, when the relationship that you prayed for becomes abusive what do you do when it moves from a refuge to a bondage what do you do when that church and that pastor who loved you it becomes a dead place of dry men's bones of tombs and of church hurt what do you do when your place of refuge now becomes a place of bondage so you have a place of mixed feelings hallelujah and wherever there are mixed feelings you get mixed reactions and when you get mixed reactions you have to take a pause to say just because it started out good I must reevaluate what it is doing to me in this hour because just because it was once refuge it could also turn into a place of bondage this is why we must be on his trail because if we have to go this way obedience is the number one factor that's going to keep us right on time and right on step with God Egypt was not always a place of threat and bondage for the Israelites because when Joseph went to Egypt it was a place of refuge a place where they were fed But to everything, there's a time and a season. We cannot be so stuck in a place because it's nostalgic. We cannot be so stuck in a place because they was good to my mama, but is they good to you and are they good to your children? We can't be so stuck in a place because we remember what it did 20 years ago or five years ago. We cannot be so stuck in a place because that very same loyalty you have to the place of refuge can be the place of bondage when the tables are turned. So I am submitting unto you tonight that your spiritual eyes come open and every place of Egypt that has turned on you that you are able to see it and you are able to shift with God. He says so he led them by way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the wilderness is a region that is uncultivated. The wilderness is an uninhabited place by human beings. The wilderness is a place where you may find wild animals, but you don't it's not inhabited by humans. Humans have not tested. It's a field where things are growing wild. That's a wilderness. And this was the way he chose to take them. And as he took them through the wilderness, we hear a lot of times it's preached that the wilderness is the place where God tests you. He tests you in the wilderness. But I submit on you tonight that the wilderness is more than a test. The wilderness is is for your development. The wilderness is to get you ready. The only reason why you have not obtained is because there are areas that have not been developed in your life. There are areas that are not quite ready yet. There are areas if God gave it to you now, if you face the fight with it, you change your mind and go back to what you used to do. There are areas that have to be developed. So before I get you totally to the promised land, I got to pull you out of your place of bondage, but I got to put you in the wilderness to develop 
develop you so that you're ready to go to Canaan and deal with the giants over there. He said that there is a place of development to get you ready. Hallelujah. If you're not in the place where you're supposed to be, it's because you're getting ready. Hallelujah. He said that the shackles, you're not bound by Pharaoh any longer. This is a place of freedom, but it is still a training ground. I am training you here. I am developing you here. I am giving you a spirit of excellence here to get you ready for what I have called you to. What is this wilderness he is leading them by? It is an unfamiliar place. It said it's not cultivated yet. That means it don't have, uh, it hasn't, the ground hasn't been tilled for vegetables. The ground hasn't been tilled for livestock. It's just wild. It's just, it's an unfamiliar place. How did we get to this unfamiliar place? Because at least when I was in bondage of Egypt, I had a hut and I knew where to go get water and I knew what those animals and insects were, but we're in a different land, oh God. Oh God, what is this, Lord? God, at least when I was shacking up with him, I knew what to expect, but you're calling me to a place where I have to be alone. At least when I was working on that job, and even though it didn't pay enough, and even though it was hurting my self-esteem, at least I knew what to expect, but you, now you have me in a transitory space that is unfamiliar and uncultivated, and I don't know what to do here. Lord, I don't know how to fight. I'm not ready for my promised land but I had to come this way how did we get here how do we get to this place where they went from being your loving child to being your full fledged enemy how did I get to this place how did I get to this place where I was once healthy and now my body is turning on me my body of my youth has now turned into a tomb hallelujah how did I get to this place how did I get to this place where I had a land of overflow and finances and now my money is tight how did I get to this place if you are blessing me oh God this is an unfamiliar place. How did we get here? Because God led you here. If you are under the sound of my voice, God led you the wilderness way. He led you this way because everything you knew up until this point, you got to throw it out. The word of the Lord says, I cannot put new wine in old wineskins. It won't mix. And I am, behold, doing a new thing. Everything you thought you could have worked, you can't work it in the wilderness. Hallelujah. The terrain of the wilderness is not the terrain of Egypt. And it is not the terrain of Canaan. You must learn the new land. You must learn how to be successful here. Because once we are done here, we shall cross over to the place that is flowing with milk and honey this is a new place it is unfamiliar and the only way you're gonna navigate out of here is by following God through his obedience being obedient to the father is the only way you're gonna get freedom out of this uncultivated land this in-between space everybody likes stuff when it first start when you first get your hair done it looked great but when it's in that growing out phase, after you cut it off, it's not really a hairstyle anymore. It's an unfamiliar space. Everybody likes when they first start the business. It's exciting. But then when the money stops, you don't understand what's going on. It's not so exciting. It's a middle space. And there's something about these middle wilderness spaces is because God is saying, I'm developing you here. I don't want you to think that I've left you. You know that I'm with you. I brought you here because I want to refine you. I brought you here so that I can remove the dross from your life. I brought you here because there are some things you need to learn. There are some people you need to meet. There are some more excellence you need to gain. I brought you here. So that as soon as you get in a fight, you don't turn back. 19 says Moses took the bones of Joseph with him and he had placed 
the children of Israel under an oath, saying, God will surely visit you and carry up the bones. I said, okay, God, what are you doing with Joseph bones? Because I felt like it was such a disrupt in the in the in the uh in the text i say okay god we're here and then you throw in joseph because god always has to take you back to the beginning how did they get to the place of bondage how did they get to egypt because it was first a refuge how did they get there because joseph hallelujah joseph hallelujah joseph when the famine came, Zephaniah Paneah, he became number two up on the Pharaoh and he saved the Israelite people. He saved the 12 tribes. He saved his brothers and his father. And because he did that, it was not forgotten, people of God. Oh, hallelujah. The reason why verse 19 is in the text is so that you know that God fulfills his promises. Because before Joseph died, he made an oath unto them that they would take his bones. That he would not have to have his bones rot away in a foreign land. So even though he was on assignment, he was on assignment in a foreign land that was not his home. But once the assignment was fulfilled, even though his death had occurred his bones had left with his people to go to the promised land this shows us that God's promises are going to be fulfilled Joseph's bones being moved out of Egypt out of that tight space going into the promised land shows us that we shall recover all oh hallelujah not even your bones will be left hallelujah the word of the Lord says that he will restore the years that the locust and the canker worm and the palmer worm have, le have eaten out of your life this is a season of restoration hallelujah because the text lets us know that even when it was time to move hallelujah when it was time to advance even the bones couldn't stay hallelujah because when God collects on your debt oh hallelujah when you have to be paid back hallelujah when it has to be given up for what you went through hallelujah there will be nothing left on the table and you shall recover all down to the bones hallelujah down to the you will even recover those things that are on your bloodline we need to understand that it's not just generational curses that get passed down but there is generational blessings hallelujah and there are some things on your bloodline hallelujah that the saints of old have paid for hallelujah that you shall recover hallelujah it is an inheritance of the Lord the bones are going to go with you when it's time to cross over it said that Joseph bones hallelujah because he made oath, they took it with them. They did not forget. And just like they did not forget, God wants you to know you had to go that way because he did not forget. Because once the assignment is fulfilled, we have to move people of God. So they took their journey from Sukkoth and camped out at the edge of the wilderness. Oh, hallelujah. I love this because I love words. The edge of the wilderness. So it says he led them by way. He led them by way. He led them by way of the wilderness. He was near the wilderness, the edge of the wilderness. So guess what? Before you get yourself in a frenzy, before you let anxiety and fear take over, because you don't understand October 2021, because you didn't understand 2020 and 2021, before you allow yourself to go crazy, because you think all oh, hell is breaking loose, I submit unto you tonight, you're not even in the wilderness you're right on the edge oh hallelujah because his grace is sufficient for you you think that you're going through he said you don't realize how much my hand has shielded you from you don't realize how many times you walked into spaces and you should have been dead but I shielded you you don't realize how many times I protected you because you thought you was in the wilderness in the uncultivated space but I had you by way of on the edge hallelujah because I did not take you out of bondage to put you back into a dry space oh hallelujah you can just see the dry space because you're close to it but I submit to you people of God you're not going through it 
Hallelujah. You're not living in it. Hallelujah. What's happening to others does not happen to you. Hallelujah. What they went through got nothing to do with you. Hallelujah. Because he has his people on the edge of the wilderness. You're not in the wilderness. You're on the edge of the wilderness. So yes, I see the wild animals. And yes, I see the dry terrain. Hallelujah. But God is keeping me. He is keeping me. I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. Went to the edge of the wilderness, the edge of the desert. And the Lord went before him in the day in the pillar of cloud to lead the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. He said to assure you that I'm with you in this in this space of uncertainty to assure you that I'm with you in this space that you don't quite understand to assure you that I'm with you in this space where the people you thought you could count on you can't even count on them the people that you thought would be there they're not even there hallelujah this unfamiliar space he said I'm going to lead the way and I'm going to lead the way in an unexplainable but an undeniable way a way that you can see hallelujah a way that you can see in the daytime, I shall lead you, hallelujah, with a cloud. You're going to see a cloud, hallelujah, and I love clouds because they hold the rain, hallelujah, hallelujah. He said in the daytime, follow the cloud, hallelujah. I know I'm not telling you everything, but I'm just telling you to praise and worship me, follow the cloud, hallelujah. I can't give you everything, but if you keep leaning into my spirit, follow the cloud, hallelujah. In the daytime, cultivate your expectation for me and understand and expect great things and follow the cloud. Hallelujah, because I shall be Jehovah Jireh, the one whose provision shall be seen. Hallelujah, and you can see it by following the cloud. And one thing about a cloud, you can only see it is when you're up close. Hallelujah, don't get too far away if you stay in the group. Hallelujah, if you stay near to me and follow the cloud by day, you'll know that I'm with you and I'm leading you. He said, but I did not just leave you for the daytime. Hallelujah, when the night comes comes hallelujah he said at the night i'm gonna send you fire hallelujah because you might can't see the cloud so i'm gonna make it real clear i'm gonna send you fire by night hallelujah so when you have sleepless nights hallelujah when you can't figure out your way he say follow the fire hallelujah press into me hallelujah when you don't know which way to go you'll know that he says follow the fire because even in the day and night I got you covered Hallelujah You serve a God that does not sleep nor slumber Hallelujah He did not take it away from them He did not remove this sign He said I know it's a shaky place That's why I'm giving you um, testimony I know it's a shaky place That's why I'm sending you confirmation after confirmation I know it's a shaky place That's why I'm going to send people you don't even know to bless you I know it's a shaky place, so I'm going to send people not only to bless you, but to uphold you, to affirm you. Hallelujah. In this space. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to send you a cloud and I'm going to send you a fire. Oh, glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. I'm going to send you something to make sure you're all right in the daytime. You shall see my sign in the sky. Hallelujah. And in the nighttime, you shall see my sign in the sky. Hallelujah. One thing about the cloud, when the cloud gets full of rain, when a cloud is full of water, it begins to rain. Hallelujah. And the rain fertilizes everything that is on the earth Hallelujah And one thing about the fire When it's cold at night It becomes a warming lap Hallelujah But it also becomes a light Unto our path Oh hallelujah Our God is a lamp Unto our feet And a light unto our path Hallelujah He is a pillar He is a pillar He is a cloud and a fire He has not left us alone Because we had to go this way People of God Hallelujah He says and I will Take away the pillar Because you're not yet at the promised land Oh glory to the Lamb of God If things ain't okay You are not yet at the promised land Hallelujah But it does not mean that God has forsaken you And left you Hallelujah In this unfamiliar space Follow the cloud and the fire Hallelujah
Hallelujah. He had to take you this way. He had to purge you. He had to show you. Hallelujah. Who was with you for real. He had to get you to a place of transformation. He had to change your task. He had to prepare you. He had to make you new. So that your wine scans can hold the new wine that he is pouring out in this hour. People of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You had to go this way. You had to go this way. You had to go this way because it is your due season. You are right on time. God is balancing the books. And after this season of obedience, it's going to lead you to emancipation and freedom. Hallelujah. Pray my strength in the Lord. Exciting things on the horizon and welcome to the Solutions family. I created this channel with you in mind. I can't wait to begin sharing with you all. My prayer is that you receive relevant solutions for everyday life. See you soon. Love, Ebb.